May nadiskubre di umanong anomalya si Congressman Marco Leta sa napabalitang sa Nebversa ng ABS-CBN at TV5 kaya ito pinaimbestigahan ayon sa kanya. Kahit anong sabihin nila kay merger yan, kay partnership, ang pinag-uusapan dito ay kung merong anti-competitive concerns considering that these are two big media companies na magsasanib sa anumang kaparaanan. Titingnan natin kung yung ganong klaseng arrangement will prevent, restrict, or lessen competition. At dahil kumpermado na nga ang nasabing partnership ng dalawang malalaking network ay di naman maitago ni Karen Dabila ang saya at tuwa na kanyang nararamdaman. Woohoo! Thank you Lord for this exciting partnership. Tila inintriga naman agad ito ng mga netizens. Ayon kay Danny Bernabe, huwag ka munang magsaya Miss Parking Lot Girl in TC, SEC and Congress. Still doubt sa Sanibwersa ng Two Giant Network. Karen, your network still have some issues not yet solved by your network. It's a problem. You know, sabi ni Giovanni Fernandez, too early to celebrate. Marco Leta and NTC is coming. Ano ang masasabi nyo kay Karin Dabila mga kababayan? Rita Gadi, idinetalye ang buong pandaraya ni Cory Aquino sa snap election na naganap noong 1986. Dating Pangulong Marcos ang nanalo sa halalan. Subalit si Cory Aquino ay nakipagsabuatan sa ibang bansa at mga bias media para sindakin at takutin ang mga Marcos para tuluyan na itong mapalaya sa Malacanang. Chris Aquino at Balsi Aquino muli na namang napahiya kung paano ipinamukha sa kanila ni Ms. Rita Gadi ang kasinungalingan patungkol sa kanilang ina. What is it that um, many of the issues that are being raised against the Marcoses and now against his junior seem to be coming from the past? I mean, you know, like uh, 36 years ago. And that's why the question that came up first, binabasa ko nga sa inyo na uh, marami nagtatanong, paano ba nangyari na... Uh, si Mrs. Aquino naging presidente. Well, they were born or already voting at the time, not born. Pero yung, yung mga nag-participate na during the uh, snap elections na ang tawag in 1986. And that was the time na tumakbo si President Marcos for the snap elections and Mrs. Aquino was the other candidate from the opposition. Yan yung opposition was the laban. Uh, yan yung mga liberal party, yung mga opposition against uh, the Marcos. So, siya ang pinili na kandidato. Early on, they... they had, of course, several um, personalities that were suggested and one of them was Salvador Laurel. But then, uh, Mrs. Aquino had some kind of an emotional content as far as uh, her candidate's concerns because of what happened to her husband who was shot at the tarmac, that is Senator Benigno Aquino uh, at the time. So, uh, siya ang napili ng opposition. Pero paano ba siya naging presidente? That is the question, one of the first questions that they raised to me, na tinanong. So, Nagpatawag kasi ng snap election si President Marcos, you know. So, uh, why did he have to call for a snap election when his uh, term of office would have ended in 1987? Kaya hindi na siya kailangan na magpatawag pa ng election ng 1986. Uh, at uh, 1985 na nagpatawag siya, 1986 yung snap elections. But there was pressure. There was pressure coming from the United States of America. Yan talaga klaro sa pagkat nakita natin na nagkaroon ng maraming bisita na pumunta dito senators, uh, former ambassadors, former uh, members of the Pentagon, officials, lahat yan, uh, nagpunta dito, kinausap si President Marcos, etc. and all of them. They wanted him to form some kind of a coalition government or to step down. At, you know, maraming, maraming suggestions. And one of the last that uh, came, you had uh, former ambassador Philip Habib and then of course uh, Paul Laxalt, Senator Paul Laxalt. Bakit yan dalawa ang medyo mabigat ang kanilang dating dito nung panahon na yun. Well, for one, um, uh, Senator Laxalt was sent here because they were looking for somebody uh, who could be able to relate uh, well with President Marcos. And since Senator Laxalt was part of the uh, contingent of the United States of America that fought here in our country in the last World War, and since President Marcos is also part of the United States Armed Forces in the Pacific, yung New South Wales in the Far East, na sinasabi niya, so there would be some kind of a, some kind of a memory bonding kaya it would be easy for Senator Laxalt to open up to President Marcos kaya siya ang pinadala. And so then uh, you had all of these uh, exchanges that they had until finally the famous uh, lines ng sinabihan nga ni Senator Laxalt si President Marcos cut and cut clean, something to that effect. But 
There were several other conversations also na nangyari. Pero yung balikan natin yung sinasabi nga, paano ba nangyari na, manal, uh, na hindi naman nanalo na papag naging pangulo si Mrs. Aquino. So ganun nga, nagkaroon ng snap elections and one of the other um, officials from Washington that also came and put pressure on President Marcus was si uh, former ambassador Philip Rabin. And he had several, uh, I don't know if that's the right word, pero parang demands nga na sinasabi. For one, um, Kung pwede, ay uh, palitan na yung kanyang buong cabinet kasi 20 years na daw yan. Pangalaga, alisin daw si Mrs. Marco sa kanyang mga posisyon kasi they were also suspecting that the she will take over if anything happened to President Marcos. Then they were also very particular about the uh, basis, yung American basis dito sa Pilipinas. And so they wanted uh, to make sure na masasecure yung kanilang basis and they did not like the fact that President Marcos reduced the uh, timeline from 99 years to 25 years, and then from 25 years to a review of five. Plus the fact that they also uh, had a reduction of the uh, of the hectare that they were occupying, and of course, uh, what is also a little bit, um, you know, uh, not acceptable to uh, to the Pentagon or to the American policymakers is the fact that Sabi ni Marcos, we should not be dependent on what American Congress would. Uh, would pass as far as giving military aid or aid to the Philippines. Instead, yung paggamit nila ng basis, magbayad sila ng renta. So that would be a regular monthly payment or, or yearly payment that they would make instead of the Philippines waiting for the American Congress to pass a, a bill uh, apportioning how much they will give for, for aid. So ayaw ni Marcos ng ganun. Kailangan ginagamit ninyo yung dito. Uh, which is really for your defense more than it is for the defense of the country kasi nga, hindi naman pwede na basta papasok sila kung sa karing merong gigera dito sa atin. Uh, and remember how it was the Second World War. Pinabayaan nga tayo dito for how many years that we were occupied by the Japanese. And so, they came after the war in Europe at saka lang bumalik. It's the, the famous line of uh, General MacArthur, I shall return. Bakit I shall return? Kasi nang galing na nga dito, hiniwanan tayo, tinapos muna yung gera sa Europe. So, anyway, that's, that's just a side a side comment that we're doing, but that's part of history. So that is what happened. There was pressure from uh, Washington, from the uh, from the policymakers. You, know, you must remember at the time, President Reagan was a very good friend of President Marcos, but there are officials in American bureaucracy, uh, such as uh, Secretary Schultz of the State Department, who are actually part of the uh, defense of not just the South China Sea, but of America as far as world powers or other world powers are concerned. So there was pressure here. Uh, on President Marcos because they wanted to secure that the American basis would be guaranteed uh, to stay for uh, not just until 1992, which is the end of the 25 years, but even beyond that. Remember, this was all happening during the time already of Mrs. Aquino. So, paano ba nangyari? Nasa Mrs. Aquino nga ang naging presidente where there was a snap elections. Prior to the snap elections, there was already the propaganda. The propaganda machinery, magaling sila dyan sa kanilang media. They control the Western press. They also control many of the most of the media here in our country, kasi ganun talaga, ang may, may hawak ng ating media na tinatawag na the oligarchs, you know. Ayan, mga opposition against Marcos, ayaw nila yung ginawa ni Marcos na magkakaroon ng urban land reform, tapos yung land reform din, maraming nawalan ng kanilang mga asenda and so forth, and many other things besides. So, that was what happened, and that pressure actually had President Marcos telling uh, uh, Ambassador Habib and Paul Luxor that uh, you cannot tell me how I would run my country better than I would. But be that as it may, talagang nagkaroon ng malaking pressure until uh, there was this interview with David Brinkley in this television program and that was when, um, with certain questions that were already programmed for, for President Marcus to give an answer, sinabi na niya, okay, I will call for a snap elections uh, come next year. Kasi uh, the interview was done sometime in November. Uh, Mrs. Marcus at the time was coming home from Moscow after the uh, consecration of Our Lady of Fatima's image and Our Lady of Peace in the uh, St. Louis Cathedral in Moscow. Pauwi na kami nun. I was covering Mrs. Marcus then, and we were in Tokyo when President Marcus on live television here was interviewed by Mr. Brinkley, and that was where he announced in November 1985 that there will be snap elections in February 7, 1986. So, yun na But prior to that, as I said, the machinery of a propaganda and media was already running, and there was already the... Um, well, the hovering albatross of all of these uh, statements coming from everywhere that media was controlling na kung si Marcos ay tatakbo sa February 1986, mandadaya siya. There will be cheating that will be until so, hindi pa nga nagsisimula yung campaign period ng February na yan, ng January and February 
ang dunak yung propaganda nil. I am saying this in answer to um, a deja vu of what seems to be happening now because lately, over the past uh, week or so, we have been hearing well on social networking that uh, the opposition will not accept a Ferdinand Marcos Jr. to win in this election or something. And they're already, uh, you know, there is already all of this movement that a massive electoral protest will be um, presented to the candidate so that, they, you know, because everybody says with all the surveys and, and all the all the indicators, I should say, that Ferdinand Marcos Jr. will, be win, will win this uh, coming election. So prior to that, ayan, nakahanda na sila uh, to protest uh, the proclamation to say that Mandaya para siya manalo because matikita na natin yung trending as of now in social networking in many of the statements being made by of course, bloggers, etc. and all of that. So I'm mentioning this precisely because parang merong repeat performance of what it was in 1986, 36 years ago. So your question, whoever sent this question to me, not just one person but several, papano naging presidente si Mrs. Aquino, well, by the hand of the most powerful country in the world at the time, yun na nangyari. So President Marcos passing through the legal procedure of the proclamation for the office of the presidency, dumaan yan sa tinatawag na National Board of Canvassers, which is Parliament. You must remember, at the time, we already had a Parliament. Hindi ito yung Congress ngayon, na merong may mga lower chamber, merong upper chamber, wala, isa lang yan. Just one legislative branch uh, disappeared in the time of President Marcos, and that was Parliament. The National Assembly, kaya nga ang tawag yan, Batasang Pambansa. That is the Filipino term for the National Assembly. And they comprise the uh, National Board of Canvassers. So, through the uh, several days that, uh, according to the law, according to the fundamental law, they were canvassing the votes from all the regions. Diyan ng karon ng tinatawag na nabilangan ng summary na ng boto. And despite the fact that you had several um, returns from this Board of Canvassers that were set aside, kasi you had uh, one of the members of parliament who was uh, objecting to some of those returns. So, tinabi yun, nilagyan ng asterisk at saka na lang daw uh, babasahin o saka na lang isasama sa total number of uh, canvas votes kasi merong question. So, nilagyan ng asterisk. So, despite the fact that may mga tinabi and despite the fact na nagkaroon din ng Citizens Arm, which is the NAMPEL, na nagbilangan din doon sa Masal uh, uh, Green Hills, despite the fact that all of this was happening, panalo pa rin yung sa canvassing of votes si President Marcos by about a million or so votes. At ito, na-declare, hindi lang sa Commission of Elections, ngunit sa doon mismo sa Parliament, sa National, uh, National Board of Canvassers. So he was declared and proclaimed the winner as President of the Republic of the Philippines for that snap elections. Pero nag-object yung grupo ni Mrs. Aquino. Sabi nila, dinaya sila. At uh, they did not accept the fact na constitutionally and legally, Marcos was the elected president. So what did they do? Yan, yeah, nag sila all over the country kung saan-saan. After February 7 elections, uh, sa katutak na mga rally ang kanilang ginawa, objecting to the uh, proclamation of President Marcos. But nonetheless, President Marcos took his oath of office as President of the Republic. So nabaya naman ni Mrs. Aquino sa Club Filipino. Nag oath of office din siya. Not according to the constitution that she that uh, sh she should have followed, which is our Philippine constitution, but according to what her legal advisors and her opposition group uh, determined as mag, mag, ano rin siya, mag and of course she was supported by the United States of America bureaucracy that is the office of Secretary Schultz uh, nasulat na yan by Secretary Schultz himself sa kanyang libro sinulat niya yung procedure na yung, yung, yung pagpaklaim kay Mrs. Aquino so to answer your question yung sinabi niyo pa paano ba siya naging presidente yun ang nangyari she was supported by the United States of America when she took her oath of office and then sa so dalawa na yung presidente anong gagawin well there was already this threat that came, not just uh, by words, but a physical threat. And it so happened that um, we were there in Malacanang when uh, two helicopters were hovering over, over Malacanang and a bomb fell. So, hindi naman talagang binagsak para patayin si yung uh, first family, pero panakot. Because they could have done it directly uh, on the palace on Malacanang itself. But it was within the vicinity, but loud enough and strong enough that uh, we have to run, we have to scamper. From the uh, ceremonial hall, we have to run to the scandal room. Uh, the chandeliers, yung mga nakapasok sa Malacanang, alam naman yung ang lalaki ng chandeliers yan. It's made of wood, pinagawa ni Mrs. Marcos yan sa paeta. It's uh, carved in wood. Yun ang malalaking uh, chandeliers doon sa ceremonial hall. Talagang uh, 
nagyanig, yung manig yun. Tapos yung mga, yung mga kurtina talagang gumalaw and everything. So, I was there. I felt, I, I heard the, the band. Um, I felt the, uh, the tremor and so forth. So, yung panapot na yun, immediately after that, meron lumabas dun sa um, telefax. Kasi wala pang mga, ano nun, wala pa tayong uh, tawag nito, yung mobile phone. So, so meron telefax na lumabas dun sa office, dun sa office ng uh, information. The information office. Meron lumabas na telefax na with the stationery and the letterhead of the United States Embassy. Embassy of the United States of America. But it was unsigned. So, ang nakasulat doon, I wish I had a copy. I have a copy, but hindi, hindi ko kaharap na yun. Sinasabi doon that if um, President Marcos would be attacked in Malacanang by the people or the, the opposition that is there in EDSA, uh, you must remember merong mga nag-rally sa EDSA rin in support of Enrile and Ramos. So, kung yung grupo na yun ay parating na sa Malacanang at uh, binomba na nga si Marcos doon, and he will retaliate with violence kung kung yung mga sundalo niya doon na magpo-protect na magpo-protection sa Malacañan yung presidential security group or whatever you would call them uh papasok ang US Marines. Wag siyang gumamit ng pwersa that he should not use violence or force against the people that wala pa naman doon eh that will be coming over from Edsa to Malacañan. Ganun. So nakita niyo na yung the process is already there as a matter of fact uh, sinabi nga ni Secretary Schultz sa kanyang libro it was not a matter of how to take him out. It was a matter of when. So, naghintay lang ng timing. So, yun na nga. Kasi, uh, may mga sundalo si Enrile, tapos may mga tao din sa EDSA, tapos binomba yung Malacanay. So, tapos sinabihan na kung mag-retaliate si Marcos ay pagpasok ang US Marines. Prior to that, you had on television, on live television, yung mga nahuli ng mga members of the armed forces na mga kasamahan ni Enrile na gustong pumasok na ng Malacanay para in stage na yung first family. Kaya na-arresto sila doon sa before they were able to get to Malacanian. So, doon pa lang, nakikita mo na na talagang merong movement na to remove the Marcoses. So, nung na-arresto yun, ang sumunod naman na nangyari yun ang kinwento ko na nagbansak sila ng dalawang bomba at uh, pagkatapos ay sinabihan na through a telefax which was unsigned but with a stationery para alam nila, alam ng mga tao ni President Marcos and he himself na galing sa embassy ng ng Amerika. So, yun nga ang sinabi. And then, of course, uh, there were conversations between him and uh, Senator Luxell kasi hindi na, niya, hindi na siya makakunat kay President Reagan. President Reagan was already left in the dark by Secretary Schultz and then everything else. Uh, they did not want uh, Marcos to have a connection with President Reagan. Kasi kaibigan niya yun eh. So, siguro, dun tatanungin ni President Marcos what is this that's happening. So, they kept him away from President Reagan at the time para magawa nila yung kanilang ginagawa precisely. So, yun na, uh, because of that threat, precisely, eh, baka naman talagang hindi lang bombang ihuhulog doon, baka whatever it is. And that is where President Marcus said, can you um, escort us? So, I thought, to the American embassy officials, can you bring us now from Malacanang to my hometown in uh, Bawang? Kasi, when he is there, there is the threat na baka dumating yung US Marines, baka bombahin sila, baka pumasok yung mga tao from EDSA, and of course, to protect the family, the first family that, that they were there, and babies, yung mga bata pa yan sila boarding. So, doon di, nga, Marcos decided na dalahin siya sa lawag. But then, of course, at about 7.30 that evening, in February 25, dinala siya sa Clark Air Base para magpahinga daw kasi 7.30 na ng gabi, nung, nung uh, lumipad sila by helicopter to Clark. Well, about early morning, 3 or 4 o'clock. Ito na yung, ito na yung record ng kanyang aid account. This you can read from the book of uh, Colonel Arawisa because he wrote about this in his book From Malacanang to Makiki. Makiki is the, the place in Honolulu where they were exiled. Pero sinulat na ni uh, aid account ni President Marcos na um, nung nasa Clark Air Base sila, early morning, 3 or 4 o'clock, ginising sila, ginisarmahan sila kasi sila yung um, presidential security group protecting President Marcos and the family. So, dinisarmahan sila at sinabihan sila that they are going to be flown out of Clark Air Base and for this um, rather hilarious reason, kasi daw yung Clark Air Base na nasaan si President Marcos ay napaligiran na ng NPA. So, would you believe that? But that's exactly what was told to President Marcos and it is written by his own aide de camp that they were surrounded. And President Marcos also executed an affidavit regarding that, that they were wakened at about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and they were told to, that they had to be flown out of Clark Air Base because 
threat was surrounded by the NPA, by the communists that would want to kill him. Can you imagine? The biggest military air base in our country, killed by American uh, troops and soldiers and officials, ay mapapaligiran ng NPA. Oh my goodness. Anyway, nung nilipad na sila out of uh, Clark Air Base and they were expecting President Marcos, the family, and the rest of those that were that were uh, fetched by uh, American vehicles. Sila, sila, uh, sila Mr. Cojuanco, the family of General Gare, and several others, including the staff of President Marcos. So, when they were already airborne, doon na nagtaka si Mrs. Marcos kasi malapit lang naman po aeroplano ang Lawag Airport. 